Hey everybody, this is Alex Smith with My Honest Agent, your local reading expert, and I'm happy to be here today. We are contributing to the seller guide. If you don't know, My Honest Agent and myself are trying to make the first Berks County Reading PA local guide on how to sell your home, putting the homeowner in control so they know every step of the process, how the agent gets business, what the agent does in a listing presentation, how to negotiate with an agent, uh, even things like how long does a showing take? What can I expect days on market? What are the average sale prices of this area? We're doing a suburb of every once in a while of Reading PA to tell you about this is the average sale price in the local local stats of your neighborhood. So we are trying to be the first people to give a local representation of a consumer and give them the power when they list their home rather than just the agent knowing everything and the client knowing nothing. So today we are talking about offers and negotiating points of offers in the state of Pennsylvania because it is a Pennsylvania real estate contract that we typically use as agents and realtors. So you'll be really surprised by this information. And if you if you miss something when I'm going through this or if you have questions for me, something I didn't cover, please comment below. And if you like the video, please subscribe. I have so many more coming out. I have this long list on my computer. I'm just gonna keep pumping out these videos because I just want everybody to be aware of what's going on in Berks County and Reading when you sell your home. So without further ado, let's jump into it offers and negotiating points of a Pennsylvania Reading based home. All right, so let's talk about the first thing, what everybody knows, what everyone worries about, how much am I getting for my home? But it's a little more complicated than that because you have the sale price, right? You have what you're selling your home for, and you know me, I love easy statistics, $100,000. $100,000 is what we're selling your home for. You have two different offers, one for 100, and one for 100 with seller assist. Let's say that seller assist amount they're asking for is 5,000, right? What does that mean? All right, so in one scenario, you're getting $100,000, okay? And in the other scenario, the buyer is giving you 100, let's do one and two, is giving you $100,000, but then technically at the closing table, you're giving them $5,000 back to help them with how much they pay in closing costs. So what this means is you have a buyer, right? So buyer is buying your home for $100,000. The bank is going to give them a portion of that. Let's just say they're going to give them, the bank is going to give them 95,000, right? <laughs> which means the buyer now owes 5,000. But wait, he has other things, and those are called closing costs. So let's just say, pick another number, $10,000 in closing costs. Now that buyer owes 15,000. In the buyer two scenario here, you, they're giving you 100,000, the bank is giving them 95 to cover ma the majority of that, but that they also have those closing costs for another 10. So when they get to the table, they actually only need 15,000. They're buying a $100,000 home, 10,000 in closing costs, 5%, $5,000 down payment, total they need 15,000. But if they get what's called seller assist, which is five grand, back to their closing costs, they, they only owe 10 now. So you're essentially getting 100,000 and then giving 5,000 for their closing costs, right? So then if you give them 5,000 for their closing costs, they only need 10,000. As the seller, this is no different than getting a sale price of 95,000. So at the end of this, in this scenario, let's say scenario one, you get an offer of 95,000. In both of these, you would receive 95,000. Where the biggest difference comes is in scenario one, if they're getting a loan, the home only needs to appraise for 95,000. 
In scenario two, the home needs to appraise for 100,000. So if you're right on the border and say this 100,000 only appraises for 95 and you were to continue with the sale, still giving them the 5,000 in assist, you would only net 90,000. If that makes sense, great. If it doesn't, reach out to me. I'd love to have a consultation with you. I, I explain seller assist many different times in many different ways. So this is definitely the more basic understanding of it, but I'd love to go over it with uh, you again if you were confused. But essentially, the price is what you need to appraise for if the buyer is getting a loan. Seller assist is what comes off of that sale price. So these two scenarios, your bottom line is no different. Just the difference is you need to appraise for 100 in this scenario and you need to appraise for 95,000 in this scenario. Next, let's talk about deposit money. Deposit money is sometimes construed as down payment. Down payment is if you're getting a 95% loan and you're putting 5% down, that 5% is your down payment. If you're getting an 80% loan and you're putting 20% down, 20% is your down payment. The deposit money is the amount of money the listing brokerage holds for the buyer to stay with the transaction so that they just can't walk away for no reason. Now they can receive that money back depending on their contingencies. If they have what we'll talk about in a second, which is inspections or financing or an appraisal that falls through, they can receive that money back, but they just can't walk away for no reason. So what this is saying is a buyer agrees to let the listing brokerage, whoever represents the seller, hold this X amount of money so that if I were to just, as the buyer, to just walk away for no reason, under no contingency, I would lose that money. But here's the trick. The buyer has the power with deposit money. So as a seller, you they could throw out huge numbers, $100,000, $10,000, $5,000. It doesn't matter how much because all the rules are still the same, whether it's $100,000, $5,000, $10,000. It does not matter. What I'm saying is if a buyer is having money held by a listing brokerage and an inspection goes bad, it doesn't matter how much that money is. If they want out, they get that money back. If their financing falls through because they lost their job, doesn't matter if the deposit was 100,000 or 50,000, they receive that money back. What they don't tell you about deposit money is until both parties sign a document saying this is where the money goes, so the buyer has to sign it and the seller has to sign it, whether it's going to the seller or going to the buyer, if both parties haven't signed that document and the deposits haven't been released to one or the other party, then the sell until then the seller cannot accept another agreement. So let's talk about this. Let's go through it one more time because it's confusing. If you get an offer and you accept that offer and you're holding the deposit money and then the inspection goes great, the appraisal goes great, and you're just about at closing and the buyer says, never mind, I don't want to buy this house. I'm backing out under no contingency. And you say, well, then the money's mine. Sorry, deposit money is for the seller. Sign this termination and you can be on the way. I keep your deposit. What happens if they don't sign that deposit or that termination? What happens to the money if you don't sign that termination? The answer is it's stuck. It's held by the listing brokerage. And if that seller wants to sell the property to someone else, the money can't be held anymore. So the buyer can just continue to hold out, not sign the termination, and now the seller is stuck because they can't sell until the buyer either signs the termination releasing the money to them or signs a termination releasing the money to the buyer. So you're really in a position where the deposit money doesn't matter because the buyer is protected. So if you're dead set on selling your home and you go under agreement and then the buyer backs away for no reason, you can't 
go and sell your home to someone else unless that buyer agrees that the deposit money is being sent to the seller. You are stuck. My advice as to what you can do in a situation like that is just let it go. Move on. And I know that's a bitter pill to swallow, but deposit money is there to protect the seller and the buyer. But the way the contract is written is a seller cannot move forward with a different agreement of sale until the buyer has agreed to terminate at their fault. If the buyer does not agree to terminate at their fault, the seller can't go under agreement on another home. So if you if that deal falls apart and you want to continue on to somewhere else with a different agreement, you just got to give the buyer their money back. You just got to do it. Maybe you can hold on to it for a painful period of time until you get another agreement of sale and then you can release it and move on just to make that pain hurt as much as you can. But at the end of the day, you cannot move forward with another agreement unless the buyer signs their termination releasing their funds. And if they don't, you can't move forward. It's very unfortunate, but that is the reality of deposit money. Sorry for the heartbreaking news, but we'll move on to the next one. Let's talk about inspections. Now, in the agreement of sale, there are over 10 inspections. There's property boundary inspections for surveys. There's well inspection, septic inspection, home inspection, termite, wood infestation. Oh, radon, there's so many inspections. So let's talk about the time period that this happens. So you accept the agreement and it's set in the agreement of sale how long you have for the inspections to be completed, the buyer to receive the report, and the buyer to say, this is what I want. Either I'm good, nothing is needed, or I want this repaired, or I want money back towards my closing costs in the form of seller assist so that in the future I have money to make these repairs. So for instance, you have a radon test. The radon test comes back, you have high radon levels. The buyer can ask for you to install a radon fan and have it retested to prove that the radon is lower. They can ask for a credit in the amount that a contractor would quote to install the radon system. Or on a third scenario, you can ask for a check to be cut directly from settlement to the contractor for a radon replacement. Now, the problem with that third scenario is they're typically, if there's any upcharges such as you know, say they quote you 1200 and ends up being 1400, the buyer's out for that 200 unless there's something talked about of having an inflated amount held. But ultimately, what we typically do is you either have a credit or you have the issue repaired. And it is a negotiation. So you have, say, 15 days for you to get the report and respond to the seller of what you want. And it, after you respond, the seller has five days to obtain quotes and information to respond to you. And then within two days, if they counter, the buyer has to either accept or move on. Those are, those are the circumstances. But if the buyer is to move on at that point, they still retain their deposits. They do not lose that deposit money. Okay, next bit that we'll talk about is financing and what to look out for in financing. So there's a bunch of different financing models. There's government loans such as USDA, VA, FHA. There's also conventional programs with stipulations for low income people uh, with certain local banks. But then there's also just regular conventional programs that a bunch of different banks will offer that are very, very similar. The difference is, is in those government programs, there are qualifications the property has to adhere to. Some being a little bit strange, such as handrails or carbon monoxide detectors. Those physical small things for repairs that need to be done. On the other hand, there's things like the septic and the well need to be a certain distance from each other or in FHA, there can't be a shared driveway without a shared driveway agreement. So things like that may prohibit a sale with the details of a government loan, whereas in a conventional loan, they're looking at just value. They're not as much looking at the quality or uh, work that needs to be done on a home. They're more or less just looking at the value of the property. And as long as the property isn't completely caving in on itself, a bank is fairly comfortable with 
giving them a conventional loan. Now, other things you want to look at at financing. Who is the lender? Are they going through a Quicken Loans? Are they going through a really small budget bank? Anything that's strange. As a realtor in Berks County and Reading, I prefer local banks. I prefer local lenders that are experienced with this area because there is a lot of uniqueness to the properties here. And there is a lot of things that you have to consider as far as taxes when getting approved that an out-of-state person might not understand. So a local lender is important to me. Also, how much they're putting down is important. So they'll disclose, are they putting 5%, 10%, 20% down? Typically, the more someone is putting down, the more trust you have in their, their qualifications. That being said, in 2022, people have been reducing the amount, their loan to value ratio. So they're reducing the amount they're putting down. Let's say instead of 10%, they're putting 5% down in order to help the seller with their costs, which we will be getting into in a few minutes. All right, next up is dates. What dates are you going to settle? What dates are you going to be done with inspections? What dates do you have to have the mortgage commitment in by, which is a letter saying, this is what the buyer still needs to do to, for us to commit to this loan. All of these things can be negotiated and it is a small point. The biggest one is when does the seller have to respond by? So in a multiple scenario, multiple offer scenario that we typically have, a seller will have to respond by, you know, say tomorrow. But then if we have multiple offers, they're not going to want to respond, respond until let's say the end of the weekend. That has to be talked about. That has to be negotiated. So when you're settling, when you have to respond by, when inspections are done by, when the mortgage commitment date is, those are all dates in the agreement of sale you need to be aware of and are negotiable. All right, another quick one, inclusions and exclusions. Is the fridge staying? Is the stove staying? Is the washer and dryer staying? All these things just need to be talked about because at the end of the day, no one wants to have a walkthrough and be like, I thought I was getting the fridge. It needs to be clarified up front so that everyone knows this is what's included, this is what's excluded, this is what's staying, this is what isn't. All right, I have one last one and it's gonna be really quick but semi-confusing, so if you have questions for me, please reach out. Other and extras, I have other items in here such as a home warranty. If the buyer is asking for a home warranty, which is sometimes typical, that's a cost to the seller. So you have to take that into account. If you have two offers for 100,000 and one's asking for a home warranty, that's 500 bucks less. But if that one asking for a home warranty has a way better loan program with a way better lender and no inspections and is really clean, you know, it might be worth the 500 bucks for the more guaranteed shot at the end of the day. Other extras that sometimes come along with this, and we will make more videos on you know, what this means and, and what these extras are in detail, but appraisal gap coverage. So if someone offers $10,000 over, are they willing to make up in cash that difference between the original sale price and this new number they came up with in cash if the appraisal comes in low? I know that might be confusing. Our next video is gonna jump into that a little bit more in detail. Even a buyer is sometimes covering transfer tax for the seller. So if you have two $100,000 sales, two $100,000 offers and on one hand, one of them is covering the transfer tax. In Reading City, that's two and a half percent. Everywhere else, that's 1%. So you're getting an extra grand or 2,500 bucks depending where you're, at, where you're at compared to this other offer if they're covering a transfer tax. So these small extras, these small coverages, even people willing to take on all of the work of when they have a VA, FHA, or USDA appraisal, if there's any work to be done, people are agreeing to do the work or pay for the work themselves if it's under a certain amount. All of these things are highly, highly considered now in a multiple offer market. So please be aware of the extras because that's where it really counts and people think that that's last. They think that that's not the most important thing, but the appraisal gap coverage, the cost coverage, the work coverage, all of that matters to making a smooth and easy process. Okay guys, so this has been offers and negotiating points. I hope this wasn't too draining on you. It's one of my longer videos, but there's a lot of offer points in the 14 page agreement of sale and it's typically broken into five parts with some extra stuff here and there but uh you just got to be aware of your price and seller assist 
you got to be aware of that deposit amount and how the buyer really does have the power with that and that no matter what the amount is it doesn't really show more or less strength but it does show more or less commitment uh, inspections you need to be aware of what inspections are being done and the dates involved with them as well as the dates involved with settlement financing the terms what kind of lender what kind of program how often are or when is the appraisal and the mortgage commitment inclusions exclusions what's staying what's going and other terms and extras that's probably the most important nowadays in 2022 so if you have any more questions for me please reach out or comment below like the video for me if you enjoyed it and please subscribe my name is alex smith with my honest agent have a great day reading and berks county